Hello, I'm Stefan Greber, Project for Lex Day, and today I'm back with another storage driver. So um, today we're going to be looking at the directory storage driver, which is the original most simple uh, storage driver. It does very, very little, and in most cases is not something you want to use. But it still has some niceties here and there, uh, and has the advantage to be a extremely easy to use. Um, so what it provides is pretty much what the name uh, the name says. It lets you use any plain old directory on your system as the storage for your LXD containers and virtual machines. That works effectively regardless of file systems, so long as the file system you're using is POSIX compliant, things should be okay. It's Lacking a lot of features, uh, it doesn't support any kind of copy and write. So every single instance that's created will be created by unpacking the image again and again and again. It also doesn't support any kind of snapshots. So if you're trying to create a snapshot, LexD will do it, but it's going to do it by duplicating the entire uh, data and freezing the instance during that time. So that means that snapshots are not only extremely expensive because they literally double the amount of space you're using, uh, but they also are pretty disruptive because the workload is stopped effectively during that time or paused during that time. So why would you want to use this? Well, it is quite useful if you don't want to pre-allocate any kind of storage for LXD, if you don't want to use um, any other kind of storage driver, if you don't want to have to set up uh, you know, LVM, RFS, ZFS, anything like that. It will just work anywhere. Um, and if all you do is create a fixed set of instances once and then never need snapshots on them, never need to move them somewhere else, never need to publish them, turn them into images or any of that kind of stuff, then it might actually behave just fine. And it does have the advantage of running nat like on your native file system. So it doesn't, like even like if you don't have a spare partition to put something different, then it has the advantage of not having overhead coming from having to root to, to run like a loop device or something like that. Uh, it can be pretty fast um, and it's definitely convenient for that. Now, it's not as featureless as it might seem. Um, one feature that it supports, which is not trivial to set up, but I will show it, up, uh, show it later, is it does support quotas, uh, not by default. So if you just use any plain old directory as your backend, it's not gonna let you do quotas uh, or any instance will be able to go to any size it wants, and that's kind of the end of it. But if you are using an ext4 or XFS file system that has uh, projects enabled and project quotas enabled, which is not a default, unfortunately, then NextD can make use of those to create a project per instance and then lets you well, effectively apply quotas that way. So that can be pretty useful, but again, it, it requires some amount of work to get that done. As far as config options, so I've got a documentation up here. There's really very little. As I mentioned, any kind of uh, snapshot or migration or anything is done by duplicating the entire amount of data that's done through rsync. So we've got a couple of rsync config options to limit the amount of um, bandwidth being used for those operations, as well as controlling compression in the case of um, migration. The source can be set. That's simply so you can use an existing directory on your file system instead of LXD creating one for you. And otherwise, the storage volume config is effectively the same um, set of keys that's available on all of the others. So it's just kind of the base set, which um, allows controlling whether you want to shift something, um, like a couple of keys for the shifting options. As I mentioned, it does support quotas in some cases. So if it does, then the size key can be used for that. And otherwise, you can control the automatic snapshots. To keep in mind, again, this is generally going to be a bad idea because snapshots are going to be very expensive, um, both freezing the workload and then taking a lot of space because of there not being any kind of optimized support for that. All right, so that's the documentation. Let's go, look, uh, go take a quick look at what that actually looks like. All right. So I'm back on my usual system. It does uh, have LXD 5.5 now because that got released on Monday. And let's just go through a basic LXD init again. And in this case, I'm gonna say I want a directory and that's, it doesn't ask any further question. It just goes with it and we're done. 
looking at the list of storage pools. There it is. So it just created a blank directory at that path. If we go look there, it's got the subdirectories for the different type of volumes to be stored. And now, um, if we do a launch, say Ubuntu 20.04, it's unpacking the image. And so if we go look at images directory, it's gonna be completely empty. That's because there is no such thing as an optimized volume that can be copy on write uh, cop well, that can be copied into a new instance to copy on write so that will that that actually is going to now always be empty uh, and the containers well it's there and it's just a plain old file system just dumped onto disk now as i said um snapshots are expensive so if we go look at the usage Actually, let's do disk usage on the entire pool. 491 megs. If we do a snapshot on U1, that's going to take a little while. Okay. And we've doubled the disk space. Delete it. And we're back to the old size. So, definitely something to keep in mind. The other the thing to show is we can see the entire size here of the disk. And if I go in and do an override, U1 root size 10 gig, it's still the entire size because there's no quota support out of the box. So that's what you get with the normal directory driver kind of out of the box in next day. Now I'm just gonna be showing what you can do if you've got a effectively dedicated partition or something else that you can tweak to enable project quota support and then feed that to LexT. So to do this, I'm gonna be using a, just looking at my notes, okay, the usual NVMe partition that I have. So I'm gonna do a force format on this guy there. Okay, so now I've got ext4 on it. And then the magic part is you need to use tune2fs to enable features. So in this case, projects and project quota on that partition and VME 0 and 1p3 there. Okay, with that done, now you need a mount point. So say NVMe. And then you'd normally want it to be mounted on boot. You're gonna use the FS tab for that. Go in there. Partition, mount path, file system default options, as well as passing project quota, because we're gonna need that. And then the file system check flags. Okay, Let's see if that works, so we can mount it. And then if we look at uh, 0.1p3 in the mount table, yeah, it is mounted with project quotas enabled. Which point you need to just clean it up a bit because LexD expects an empty directory to be passed to it. If there's something in it, it's gonna fail. So I need to delete the lost and found directory in this case. And with that done, we can finally feed it to LexD by creating a new storage pool. We'll call it NVMe in this case, using directory backend and the source path is mount NVMe. Storage pool is created. And if we now launch a different instance, put it in there. Okay, so now if we go look at uh, Mount NVMe, again, image is gonna be empty. Containers has the container we just created right there. Now, out of the box, nothing's really different. You can see the entire partition available because we don't have any quotas by default. Now, if we change that by setting one on it, Oops, on U2, and we go inside it, now we do have a quota. So that's really the main difference with enabling projects in project quota is that we get to do that. Um, and that works very well. So that's that's something that if you're using a different partition or if you can somehow modify the feature set of your main, uh, your main file system, then you can do this. The tune2fs command I use to turn it on needs to be run against an unmounted partition. So if you're if your own system is using ext4, you're not gonna be able to turn it on. You would need to boot into something like a live media, and then you can alter the 
the flags on your main partition and then reboot back into your OS. So that's how you, do, you need to do it if you wanted your main partition to have that flag enabled. If you've got a separate partition and you can do what I just did, that will work just fine. And that's effectively it for the directory driver. And with that, we've effectively gone through the entire bunch of them. Um, so starting with, I believe it was EFS, then we did BurFS, LVM, and now directory. The, the Ceph ones, I'm not covering in this particular series because we will have existing videos on setting up Ceph clusters and integrating with LexD. Um, and we're gonna have, um, hopefully soon, another video around the object storage feature we just landed um, once it's supported across the board. So that's why you might see here that we do have now Ceph object uh, was another driver we just added for that. So around LexD 5.6 release time, uh, we're going to have another video that goes specifically over the object storage stuff. And that's it. If you've got any questions around uh, this video or anything storage related, feel free to ask in the comment section below, or you can go on our community forum and we'll be more than happy to help you over there. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.